Hello, hello, intuitive self healers and those of you who signed on to get this 3D to 5D 101 offering. Welcome. And let's just kind of give a minute. Um, I'm going to light my sage, get my space ready here and get us all centered. I like to break my bundle of sage up into the tiny little leaves and then I light them. Hi CJ. So is it CJ? Just like CJ? Good morning. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, as you guys come on, just say hi. Let me know that you're here <clears throat> and then we're going to get right in. Okay, so 3D to 5D 101. Okay, this is one of my favorite topics to talk about because it's like the umbrella of what it is to be human, <laughs> like what it is to be in this human body. So I am Cara Carouse, intuitive life coach, and um, I, good morning, Elizabeth. I, um, I work with empaths who are really ready to do their deeply healing inner work to ultimately uh, improve relationships and be able to step into their um, their next level. Hi, Kristen. Oh my God, I'm so glad you're on in from Florida. CG. Okay, CG. And thank you for that clarification. And um, and I will um, I'll honor that. You know, some people say Kara, but it's Kara, so that's okay. CG. CG. Cool. All right, so we're here and we are digging into what it means to be in the third dimension, 3D, the third dimension of awareness, and 5D, moving towards 5D, the fifth dimension of awareness and beyond, and just like 101. Like, what does all this mean? So, oh, hi, Miriam. So glad you're tuning in, too. So, okay, you're here to learn about, you know, moving from that, that space, um, learning to not take things personally, uh, learning to trust the process, and learning about soul contracts and karmic bonds and twin flames and like all that stuff too, okay? I did the video um, earlier in the week, uh, just a couple days ago about twin flames. And so that was sort of my big um, like awakening to this this spiritual ascension. I've been on this path of spirituality since I came to yoga at age 19, over 20 years ago. And, um, and when I first came to yoga, it really opened my eyes to this whole other world. You know, I came from a family um, who was really rooted in Western medicine and um, everything that went along with treating the symptom. But then when I came to yoga and saw this world of spirituality, it was more about the, the whole entire person and beyond that. And, you know, what is, is outside of ourselves? We have our own physical body and then we have these bodies and the way we interact with, with the world around us. So, um, so I really got into that through my practice of yoga. Um, oh, yeah, Elizabeth, the Twin Flame video is up on um, YouTube and I can... Um, when I go back through, I'll, I can share that link with you in the comments. Okay. I'll respond to your, to your, to your post with that link. Okay. So, all right. So this last, um, I've had two big relationships in my life. I'm, I love just being in a relationship and being committed to one person, super loyal. And, um, I, this, the last relationship I was in really opened my eyes to the concept of moving from 3D to 5D. And so this person that I was with, he was someone I was with when I was uh, 15. And then, you know, we had parted ways and then um, came back to another good CGU. Yeah, you got the, the twin flame, totally. And, and so many of us are in relationships like this and we don't even really know it. And so I, my goal is to be able to keep the conversation going. So I was with this part, this person when I was 15, parted ways, and then ended up coming back um, together with him in 2014. And um, and I had been divorced a couple years. And um, he was my person that I always sort of wondered about. I actually, 
uh, he's featured in my book, uh, Keep Showing Up. And I'm going to reference this book a lot for this offering because so much of this book, you know, is really about just zooming out a couple lenses and knowing that this is part of our path. So I was with this person and then um, knew that I had these karmic bonds with him, knew that the connection that I had with him was more on a spiritual level, was more on a soul level. And um, it was it was like bigger than us in that it, there were so many lessons to be learned. So I knew that it was bigger than us. I knew he was the one person I always wondered about and the way when we were together, he felt like home, like all of that, yes. And then also um, the second half of the six years of the, my entire time spent with him, um, definitely the last two got really dysfunctional, got very toxic. Um, so many different uh, insecurities were revealed on both sides. Um, and we would trigger each other in different ways. And, but we still, there was still this connection. And so what, what it showed me was I have codependent tendencies, had codependent tendencies. Um, the default attachment style I would go to was very insecure. And, um, I had very poor boundaries. Like what, what I was able to learn the lessons from this twin flame relationship, it, it have been so, so powerful for my own growth my own soul's ascension. And I get into all of that um, with the inner child work I had to do, the reparenting I, I got to do for myself. I get into all that in the Soul Ascension Academy, which opens October 4th. So those were a big part, like those, and I put together like all these other pieces, which I talk about in my book. Um, I put together so many other pieces for myself and my own healing. And then I get to apply that to my one-on-one -on -one clients and, you know, um, created group coach, coaching programs around that also to be able to help others shift their own realities too. So, so much learning, so many lessons came out of this relationship. It was extremely painful. Um, and honestly, at times it still is. And my learning is continual and um, it's all practice, I say. So I believe, you know, as part of this moving from 3D to 5D awareness, part of the, um, the learning and being able to zoom out a couple lenses is understanding that this soul is here in this physical body like this you know bag of bones like this meat bag this soul is in this body to grow and to and to evolve where is siri oh it's my watch <laughs> siri no siri i'm not talking to you okay so um we're here to grow, we're here to evolve, we're here to expand, we're here to ascend. Like we're not here to work the nine to five, okay? We're not here to just whatever, pay the bills. Like that's not what this soul is here to do. This soul is really here to grow and get the lessons. And so the more we can tune into, you know, those relationships, CG, or CG, yeah, we're here to grow. The more we can tune into those and see that there is a silver lining and all that, the more we work with our own ascension. And then, so I do believe in reincarnation. Your watch does that a lot too. It caught me. Sometimes it does, but he's like, I got him as the Australian male voice. Anyways. Um, the more we can zoom out and see that, the more we're, we're going to get the lessons that we need to. I do believe in reincarnation. I do believe that our soul gets to, you know, come back. And when the lessons haven't been learned in one lifetime, they come back. We come back and we're going to we're going to keep having these same lessons. And and in the whole like um, this isn't part of what I was planning on saying. But when I when I think of karma, you know, people say, well, it goes around, comes around. And it's like, yeah, they'll get theirs, whether it's good or bad karma. It's not necessarily in this life. Like if you do something bad, something bad's going to happen to you. If you do something good, something good's going to come back to you. It's not necessarily in this life. It's more thought of as lifetimes. And so how you're showing up in this lifetime, you know, how um, honorable, how, how much you're living in integrity, how much you're living in your soul purpose, your divine assignment, your own, um, you know, you're honoring your morals, like all of that, your, eth your ethical, like all of that stuff, the more you're, you're living in your own integrity and learning from all your stuff, then we're, we continue, we get to come back and as human, ideally, um, or other animals, I believe, or maybe come back as other animals that are, you know, sort of um, have less consciousness. Like, that's just what I believe. So in our human form, um, we get to learn, we get to grow, evolve, ascend, like all of that. And then I also do believe that we're here in this physical body to learn unconditional love. 
And learning unconditional love that first starts with ourselves. And we get to learn to, to love and trust and respect ourselves first. And then from that place, then we engage it with others from that place of authenticity. It's so cliche, but if you don't love yourself, you're not going to love anybody else at such depth. So keeping those things in mind, okay? Those are huge. Um, I believe firmly that we are all energetic beings, okay? And when I say this, it's that we are all vibrating at different frequencies. So our emotions, every single emotion we have has an associated vibration to it. And then the more we are like unpacking in that emotional frequency, that's where we, that's where our resonance is. And when we, um, like there are some graphs that are out there that will say what the emotion is and what the, um, the hertz is, how it's been measured. I haven't personally measured any of it. So I um, am not comfortable like creating graphics and promoting those graphics because I just don't know. But what I do believe is that um, when we are in lower vibrational states, like we hear people say, oh, that's so, that's low vibe. Like that's so low vibe. When we hear people say that that's low vibe, when we're in the lower vibrational emotional states, we know it and we feel it. So what I want you to practice tuning in. Okay. You guys, have you seen me post this graphic before this, the lower vibrational states, this is more, um, destructive energy. It's always hard when I'm like, it's flipped and I have a hard time reading it. Okay. So this lower vibrational states are destructive and some examples of the lower vibe states, shame, inferiority, feeling embarrassed about things, um, feeling guilt or unworthiness, feeling apathy, <laughs> helplessness, hopelessness, grief, sadness, depression, revenge, hatred, anger. Um, though anger is very energizing. It's a lower vibrational state, fear, worry, anxiety. It's Coda. Don't worry about him. Um, blame, disappointment, doubt overwhelmed pessimism like you guys okay even me just saying let me know those of you who are here live even me just saying some of these you know the way they feel you know how they feel like what a bear yeah, Elizabeth um they feel bad when we're in the states physically in our bodies and when we're engaged with other people who are in these states it doesn't feel good in our bodies and then they're very, um, they, we feel very contracted when we're in these states and then ascending, we feel like more expansive. Okay, wait, Kristen, how do I handle emotionally being bullied at work? I've developed so much anxiety around going to work. So, um, do you have boundaries in place to protect you and you say what you're willing to tolerate and what you're not willing to tolerate? Because a lot of that is like their shit, you know? Um, CG, yes, for sure. Lower vibes, you physically feel it. Yes. And the more we can tune into our bodies and be in touch with those feelings, the better, because then we get to decide who we want to engage with, how we want to be showing up and when we are in those states too, because part of this spiritual uh, process of growth is understanding that we sometimes have toxic traits too. And we sometimes get in these states too. Like we're only human, you know, this soul is in this physical body experiencing these human interactions. And we do go through these things. Um, Elizabeth, yes, yeah, it's hurting your gut right now. Okay, interesting. So look at define like what it is when you're thinking about your own stuff. <clears throat> so, so this is like more 3D. This is when we're in these states. These are more like third dimensional uh, states when um, they're ego driven, when we're fearful, when we're in worry. Like, God, we're just coming off this pandemic and anticipating the second wave. And it, this has been nonstop fear. So we think about those things and we think of how they, they really keep us stuck. They keep us very contracted in one place. Sorry. And as I said, they're destructive over here. You can see that. Okay, so moving from those, um, I have other, I have another graphic too that I really love. This one that I've also created while I'm talking about the lower 
dimensions. Um, Kristen, I'm worried about confronting. You don't need to. Yeah, but it's not confronting when you're honoring your own boundaries. When you're saying what you're willing to tolerate and not tolerate, that it's not okay if someone's going to treat you a certain way or, you know, be disrespectful to you or whatever. That's you setting your own boundaries. And when you set your own healthy boundaries around that and it gets honored, it's a reflection of self-love. So look at that a little bit more and see in what ways you could be setting those boundaries for yourself to keep yourself safe. Okay, so so this other graphic, this is the spiritual ascension guide, moving from 3D to 5D and beyond in consciousness. Um, the, the third dimension is really reflected our lower self, victim mentality, okay? Abuser mentality, victim abuser. Like this, this, see these feelings? This is all what goes on when we're in these lower, lower dimensional states. We're more reactive. And like, that all sucks. Yeah, totally, Kristen, anytime. And reach out, okay? If you're feeling like you need more support around that, reach out. I'm here, girl. Okay, so moving to the fourth dimension, of awareness, going back to my other graphic here, is where we find more acceptance. We find out um, that you are the one steering the ship that you get to decide. We're in a process of co-creation. We're more willing. We feel courageous and empowered in how we're showing up. And um, there's more neutrality and the energy shifts positively. So, you know, in terms of like relationship stuff and especially twin flame stuff, um, understanding that the opposite, so one energy, everything's all energy. Energy never dies. Energy just transmutes and takes different form. And when we think about love, the opposite of love is not hate. If there's still hate, then there's still so much energy around it. There's the anger that's still there. You're still moving through a process of grief and learning to accept what is um, about the reality of the situation. So moving to a place where there's neutrality, so the opposite of love or being in a dynamic with someone like the twin flame and then now withdrawing yourself from it and getting the lessons, coming to a place where it's more like, um, like it's just, there's a Taylor Swift song. I thought, I forgot that you existed. And she's like, and I thought that it would kill me, but it didn't. And it's like, you, she just doesn't, you just don't care anymore. Like she, she's, she gets to exemplify it. I love Taylor Swift's music, but she gets to really sing about it. But it's like, it's just, it, it just is, you know, they're just, it's the energy. Um, I picture a balloon and a balloon being punctured and the air all being deflated from it. And then there's no energy left around it. So in terms of that, so moving to a place of willingness, acceptance, um, positive, positive, um, positivity, growth mindset is very important as opposed to fixed mindset, success, um, like all that. We understand that there's reason around situations. There's knowledge, there's education, and then moving up to the higher dimensions there's um we there's a lot of love we move from our heart center there's we are um happy and that we follow our intuition more with there's enthusiasm and positive expectations and this is all these are all creative energy this is creative this is not destructive like these lower vibrations are this is more like expansive and creative and we're more open to receive when we're in these higher vibrational states, okay? Moving up to the fifth dimension of awareness where we understand that everything is happening for us, not to us. That everything is all in divine order. Like coming to a place where we're trusting the process, where you're with the person for the lessons and not, you know, like, oh, they betrayed me. Um, they did this, they did that. No, well, okay, let's turn it back to yourself. What's the lesson? Where wasn't the boundary in place? And, and you know, how would, how was your role? How, what kind of role did you play in all of it? What is, how can you take responsibility for it? Re it's responsibility is your ability to respond. So, all right, moving up to the higher levels of awareness, peace, contentment, trusting, appreciation, like gratitude. Gratitude brings us up and out of the lower states. Always, 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 always focusing on the positive. The gratitude brings us up and out. Um, a feeling freedom, feeling inspired. You're a powerful manifestation. And ultimately, enlightenment. Where I don't believe that enlightenment is like a place to get to. It's sort of more a way of being. 
And so looking at this other graphic um, where it's like this spiritual ascension. So we see the lower vibrational states, the third dimension. Um, uh, it's reversed. The third dimension, I'm just going to bring it over here. The third dimension is all of these feelings. And then we move through the fourth dimension is more an empowerment of self. The fifth dimension is the realization of self. And so also what comes into play here is aligning with your soul purpose, your divine assignment, which we get into in the Soul Ascension Academy. And when we know our purpose and we know what we're here to do, that helps us know our worth and helps give us direction. Because, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, just like floating around and not really sure of um, what I'm here to do or getting caught up in this bullshit, you know, where it's like, no, we're here for so much more. So um, let me know you guys in the comments what your thoughts are on that. And if this is landing, like if this is making sense and, um, you know, you're seeing how it's possible for you to move from 3D to 5D. So Gosh, sorry, I'm feeling, having a little difficulty figuring out where to have my little graphic here. But I do share these graphics often in my community, among everything else that I post about, you know, that has to do with us being here in this human body, you know, where that's like attachment styles and um, our physiology, like the nervous system stuff and, and all of that that we get to that we get to learn about to help us navigate this human experience. So the fourth dimension, we're moving towards our higher self. We're, then we move on planetary self and our universal self. In this um, fourth dimension, self-love, acceptance, willingness, courage. You now we move on to optimism, understanding, heart-centered, like all of it, deep peace, truth, like everything that I was just mentioning, okay? Oneness. Know that I am you, you are me. Like what's what I see in you is reflected in me. What you see in others is reflected back. Like everyone's a mirror. So, um, oh, it's not a high. Yes, it makes sense. Okay, CG, this makes total sense. I've been focusing on this kind of growth for the last year. Perfect. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm so glad that you're open to receive it. Um, because it is, it is like, we really have to zoom out a couple frames to understand that there's just so much more going on here. Like, yes, the human shit comes and gets in the way. Like, I'm going to be honest and tell you guys, I have had my period the last couple days. I'm moody. Like, don't mess with my sleep. Like, yes, the human stuff comes and gets in the way. But the bigger picture is, is I get to live my divine assignment. I get to be here and share this amazing information with you so that you can transform your relationships and, and so that you can show up better and really bring in true love and really align with, you know, a, someone who's in their healthy, empowered state too. And, you know, like, like all of that amazing stuff so that you can be um, living more meaningful, fulfilling, satisfying lives. Like I get to do that. I get to walk my dog every day, you know, because of that, because I work with my one-on-one -on -one clients, because money and energy, like it's all just this exchange. And, and so I get, you know, I've gotten to see the bigger picture here. And my hope is that I can keep the conversation going and continue to share it all with you guys too. So um, Elizabeth makes sense in working on this. Yes, I'm so glad you guys are all here and ready to receive all of this. So these two graphics, I do share a lot in my community um, and in my, you know, space. And um, all right, there's another one I want to touch on too. And actually, there's two more. So um Ego versus soul. Okay, I share this one. Um, CG, yes, I've been saying this. Um, all this doesn't matter. Yeah, when dealing with the human shit, totally. And, and this is, it's kind of like, um, like, that's so 3D. You know, it's kind of like trendy or like cliche to say that right now. But it's like, though that stuff really is like so 3D. It's so third dimensional. It's so like lower vibe. And it's like, that doesn't fucking matter. Like that shit does not matter. Um, it helps detach from it and focus on the bigger picture. Yes. Yes. That's what it's all about. This is what, you know, this is what we're here to do. Grow and evolve. Hell yeah. Okay. So ego is major 3D. Ego stuff. Ego is so fear-based. Our ego wants to keep us safe. So thank you, ego. Thank you. Like our ego wants to keep us safe, but really our ego also wants to keep us small. And our ego will hold us back at times and try to sabotage things. And so our soul, we get to tune in with our soul and move from this place. Okay, so let's look at this one. The ego serves 
itself like it seeks to serve itself the soul serves to seek others so when we get when we get clear on what our soul purpose is and our divine assignment yeah carl Jung, absolutely i have a background in psychology from 2003 i got a degree in psychology this was my original mission i remember learning all about carl Jung and all the different archetypes and yes dream analysis like all that yes i love nerding out over things like that and absolutely our ego and our shadows and um, the it ego, the super ego, absolutely, all of that other stuff for sure. So this, these concepts have been around. There's just more of an awakening around our soul awareness. So I, we dig into all the soul purpose, divine assignment in the Soul Ascension Academy. Um, like I said, that opens up October 4th. There's a wait list that's open for it now. And those of you who do jump on the wait list, you'll be privy to an exclusive offer that I'm going to be sharing as we get closer to a, um, opening registration. So get on that. I will put I will put the link for that um, in the comments or in the description of this video. Okay, so ego blames others, um, is jealous, tends to look outward, sees life as competition and comparison. It's rooted in a sense of lack, like there's never enough when we're in our ego state and is very limited. It plays small, it's fearful, judgmental, critical. Okay, so maybe you find yourself hanging out in, oh, hi, Lily Cat. Maybe you find yourself hanging out in ego more than in soul. Um, maybe you see these qualities in someone else that you've chosen to, you know, spend time with or align with. You might want to reevaluate that or bring more awareness to it for them and for you. So ego, you can see, you know, how it corresponds with some of these lower vibrational states too. And then we look at soul. Okay. Let's see. Oh, wait, over on this side. Okay. <laughs> the soul seeks to serve others. My soul gets to serve you guys right now and share this information with you so that you can create a new reality so that you can bring in the love of your life, like all of that. So you can become more confident, like all of that. And you get to figure out how your soul is here to serve too. The soul takes responsibility, the ability, responsibility, our ability to respond, meditation, like yoga, um, focusing on yourself, your own grounding practices, getting your shit together, learning about your nervous system and self-regulation, co-regulation, like all of this has, we get to learn how we, learn to respond and not react. Okay. That's more from a soul level. Celebrating the successes of others. I love to celebrate every little thing tends to look inward, um, knows that there is enough. Okay. Abundance mentality. There is enough. We possess unique gifts to share. We each have our unique gifts to share. Uh, awareness of that abundance is our birthright and the soul is infinite expansive, trusting, forgiving, accepting, like, yes. Okay. So tell me you guys, where you, those of you who are here live and who are in tuning in on a replay, tell me where you feel like you unpack ego or soul right now. Because, you know, um, I had, I posted the other day too, <clears throat> until now, you know, until now we had we were showing up in these different ways. And we get to say until now, because when we learn better, we do better. And so here, you know, you're learning better. And so then we get to choose to do better. We get to decide. So which do you show up as ego soul right now? And then, you know, moving forward. Oh, soul, Sana, yeah. And girl, I'm in Miriam soul. So you guys, I'm sure that's been practiced too, because part of, of all of this is that we get to unlearn and relearn new ways of being. We get to reprogram. We've often had parents who have had um, CG uh, soul, but it's hard work to get to that point. Jenny, soul. Hi, Jenny. Cheryl, there are aspects of both that I resonate with. Kristen, and I feel like a combination of both. Absolutely. And that's okay. It's all practice. This is what I always say. And even for myself and for my clients, this is all practice. Um, all, Elizabeth, alternating between ego and soul. Yeah. And that's okay. And that's okay. Because it's all learning. And we're, we're all, you know, ideally, we're all working to move through our own soul's ascension. And indefinitely through the Soul Ascension Academy is digging into all of this and then some and continuing to support this growth. Um, hi, Jenny. Hi, beautiful. So, um, 
so okay um i was gonna say something but then i forgot soul ego growth i, I it'll come back to me um okay one other graphic and then we're going to talk about soul contracts and karmic bonds this is it okay energy leaks i've talked about energy leaks before and so energy leaks are basically any ways that are depleting to us. So we're all energetic beings. We're all here to uh, get the lessons, learn, grow, expand, evolve, ascend, like all of that. We're here to learn the unconditional love. And then these are some energy leaks that you may get caught up that are so 3D and, um, and we work to just move past them and see the bigger picture. Toxic relationships. Oh, God, guys. Yes, we're here to move beyond them. Unhealed traumas really suck the life out of us. Maladaptive, insecure attachment styles. Unhealthy boundaries. Weak, porous, rigid. Like I talk about them in the Soul Ascension Academy. All this. Um, uncluttered homes. Or no, cluttered homes. Excuse me. Cluttered homes, vehicle, purse, wallet. So part of what I do with any launch of my programs, because um, I'm getting ready to move into my launch for the Soul Ascension Academy. It'll be like about 10 days of um, the cart being open, registration being open. Anytime I'm moving into a launch, I like to clean my space. So I cleaned my breezeway out. And after I clean and declutter and like, you know, all of that, then I sage everywhere. I crack the door, the window, allow all of that to escape. So, um, so it just creates, it creates room for more abundance to come in. And that's, that's what, I, you know, this, there's a, a flow of energy that's always happening. And that's what we want. Okay. No stagnation. That's not good for anybody. So, um, Clutter, a, a cluttered home, purse, wallet, vehicle, like all of that, those are major energy leaks. Those are socking your soul. Okay, so evaluate your own space. A dysregulated nervous system. I get into the nervous system, the polyvagal theory, how important it is to learn self-regulation and co-regulation to... Um, when we have a history of trauma or abuse, we usually, in our physical body, we stay in these hyperactivated states. And so, yes, we're here. The bigger picture is to learn, grow, get the lessons, all of that, unconditional love, all of that. And while we're in this physical body, we get to learn how to um, navigate the most optimally, like, you know, working through it all. Cheryl, feng shui, or we sometimes say in my family, fu shui. So, um, yes, definitely. Love Feng Shui. Um, I don't know very much about it, but all the energy of it all and directions and yes. <clears throat> um, so learning about the, the dis learning to regulate your own nervous system, but a dysregulated nervous system is a major drain, major energy leak. Gossiping, complaining, unfinished projects, like low vibe. <laughs> okay. Um, unused subscriptions on auto pay or renewals that you don't use. Okay. Like looking at all those things for yourself, um, even going through your inbox and unsubscribing to mess to emails that don't resonate with you anymore. That's okay. Um, I just went through my email list and, or my email, my inbox and deleted like 25,000 emails. And as they're filtering back in, I'm like, delete, unsubscribe, delete, unsubscribe. And so it just, it feels really good at this time to stay on top of that. And um, and that's my plan is to, to be able to maintain that. Unpaid bills, look at that. Uh, gripping and holding on when you need to let go. Major energy leak. Trying to control others. Major energy leak imbalanced masculine feminine energies for those of you who tuned in for balancing sacred energies major energy leaks when we're out of whack and that's now for sale on my website um for anyone who does want to pick that up but um yeah those are big major drains not living in the present moment too focused on the past or the future judging yourself or others or an inability to express your needs all major energy leaks okay all that are going to keep you in ego that are going to keep you in the lower vibrational states in the third dimension they're very 3d <laughs> and the goal is to be moving towards 5d okay so tell me if those energy leaks make sense you guys and which one of them you're going to be focused on the most to like button up elizabeth I, oh my god i love all this i have to jump off and go to class okay peace and love to you too you can tune in again it, this live will be up for 48 hours in here Okay, so 
tell me which of those you're going to focus on and then we're going to move to soul contracts and all that and then um wrap it up one other thing though about the 3d stuff is um learning to not take things personal so this is a quote that i think is very very important um not even just that um, Michelle, my god, nail on the head. All of the energy leaks, you mean? Yeah. So look at all that stuff for yourself. Um, because you want to be showing up as your best self. And all that stuff is like, it's really keeping you down. So um, have you guys heard of the Four Agreements by um, Don, Ruiz, Don Miguel Ruiz? Let me just make sure. Don Miguel. Yeah, Don Miguel Ruiz. Okay. Um, so he has this book, The Four Agreements. Um, Miriam, you're going to focus on energy leaks. Okay. So he has this book, The Four Agreements. The four agreements are this. Don't take any, and I don't know what order they're in, but t don't take anything personal. Uh, always do your best. I didn't write these down. Um, don't take anything. Hold on. I'm going to look in my other tab. Um, don't take anything personal. Here, let's see. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> Thanks for stepping in with me. Oh, I'm open in another tab. Um, be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personal. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. Okay, so if you haven't heard of the four agreements, check them out. Because those help us move from 3D to 5D. Like, don't take anything personal. What? Yeah. And then, and then always do your best. Yes, definitely. Don't make assumptions. Yes, all that. Kristen, you, my dad told me not to wear my heart on my sleeve and I do take everything personal. Yeah, I would love to get past that. Yes, okay, so it's practice. It's all practice. So if you haven't heard of those um, four agreements, I definitely recommend going check them out. He's got a book. He's written other books too, like Mastery of Love and like other great books too. So definitely go, check, go look into those and know that they'll be supportive also. Okay, so now my book, Keep Showing Up. Um, this is a book, uh, it's a memoir. The first part of it is a memoir and it's, um, Cheryl, good. You love those. Yeah. The four agreements. Um, it's a memoir and powerful guidebook for empaths to embody self-love, self-empowerment, and self-awareness. The first part of it is my story. And, um, I'm super pumped because there've been new reviews coming up on Amazon for it. So, um, I love reading them. The first part is my story. And, um, and, and I do, you know, talk a lot about moving from 3D to 5D. And then the second part is the lessons. And it's like um, 38 plus lessons on um, like, this is the table of contents, but on, you know, being able to really do the work and, um, and help yourself through it all. And, um, and then the third part is like the wrap up and, and, and me bringing all of it together. But so as far as um, soul um, contracts go, here's the deal. Be, before, excuse me, before our, our soul enters this body, we make agreements. Oh, your boyfriend, your boyfriend, your best friend um, just ordered the, your, my book for you. Good. Thank you. I'm so glad. Thanks for the support. And yeah, you're really going to, I think you're really going to like it. If you're, if my message is landing with you now, I think you're really going to um, appreciate my book. So, um, so yeah, chapter 11 is it's bigger than us. And I have a quote in here. Nothing ever goes away until it's taught us what we need to know by Pima Trudon. So Nothing ever goes away until it's taught us what we need to know. So you guys, these patterns and relationships that we'll typically have, the toxic relationships, the dysfunction, our insecure attachment style, whether we push people away or, oh, CG, okay, yeah, order my book. Whether we push people away or whether we're um, getting graspy and like wanting someone else's validation and approval and like love and to be seen and heard, like all that, no matter which way we're going with it, whether our nervous system is dysregulated, like all of that, it's going to show up in another relationship if you don't change yourself. If we don't do the work on ourselves, it's just a new body. It's just this, it's just the same unhealthy dynamic with a new person. And some of you, you know, you may have experienced that in the past where it's like, yeah, this shit keeps showing up. So, okay, it's bigger than us is the title of this chapter. Soul contracts, karma fans. Uh, sacred contracts are written for us before the soul our soul enters this body and we really um it's really like our soul 
and with other souls, they go, okay, yeah, we have this agreement. And I posted just the other day some examples of soul contracts, but um, to give some examples right here, to learn forgiveness for your soul, another soul has agreed to give you the experience of betrayal or mistreatment. Okay, for you to learn how to be independent and strong in this life, another soul has agreed to abandon you at your worst. Ugh, sounds so awful. So painful in the human form to be going through that, but, but getting the lesson is the beauty. Um, you know, some people I think about, you know, I was a pediatric palliative care nurse for, for uh, a handful of years. And I think about, you know, but what about them? What about them? The babies and the kids and they're sick and like, what the hell did they do? You know, okay, well, so in my mind, because I'm, I, I'm moving to the five dimension and beyond that, I go, okay, like, yes, them in this human form, it's really sad that they got that that they had that experience that they had cancer that like whatever um the lesson is and even people in their adulthood the lesson gets to be allow others to care for you some you know some there's a silver lining in there somewhere that i zoom out and i go okay this is their soul's lesson for right now is to learn you know to learn to allow others to let to help them uh, to learn about self-esteem, assertiveness, boundaries, empowerment, another soul has agreed to abuse you. Like, ah, uh, which I have that in, his, in my history too. Like, yes. And what were my lessons? I was a child, you know, was I was a child and um, my mom's boyfriend molested me for four years and I we went to trial and that's how my book starts out. I was on trial as a 12 year old and, and you know, yeah, it sucks, but like my my soul gets to learn. I got to be, I learned to be very assertive. I learned to be a leader and hold this space. You know, I learned, I learned from that. I can't go back and change any of that. So it's like just seeing that um, my soul contracts are, were to get these lessons. So there, um, there are a couple different people and souls that we interact with. We have kindred spirits and, um, our kindred spirits are like people that we have stuff in common with and that we feel comfortable with. You know, I say it's our soul tribe. These kindred spirits, you feel them where it's like, oh, we have so many things in common. And we, you know, we keep having these, um, these, these things come up and we're like, me too. Um, Cheryl, forgiveness is very hard for a toxic family relationship. That's what you're finding. Yeah. So boundaries, um, major boundaries, um, ex grief acceptance for, you know, wishing that things were a, a different way. <clears throat> I'll offer you right now in response to you posting that. Um, it's important to, to grieve, how, you know, wishing it had been a healthy dynamic, wishing that, you know, people weren't all toxic or, you know, whatever your situation is. Grieving that, accepting it, moving through the forgiveness for it, and then putting boundaries in place around that so that you are safe and that you can continue to focus on your own healing and your own stuff and not get caught up in all that because we can very easily get pulled down into those lower vibrational states. Think about Michelle Obama. She would say, when they go low, we go high. Vibes, <laughs> it's all vibes. So, um, and there was another quote that I thought of too um, around that while I am talking about that. Oh, another quote that's like, rise above it. You know, when people are like, oh, just rise above it. You know, where it's like, yes, the vibrational states of things. Okay, so kindred spirits. And then there are soulmates. We have soulmates. Those those can be like our friends, our family, our lovers. Um, if they are lovers, I believe that they may not stay lovers for the our entire life. Um, it's said that we have three intimate partners. Like we have three big loves in our lives. We have our soulmates, our twin flames, and our life partners. So the soulmate um, I shared in my video last week on twin flames, I believe my soulmate was my ex-husband and we're still on, on great terms now. Um, we were together um, for 12 years total, married for seven. Uh, we have two boys together at the time of this video, they're 12 and 15. And, um, and we, right after our divorce, I, almost, you know, I would have loved to have had him killed, but, um, 
I didn't, thankfully. And now he's an amazing dad. Like things were really bad between us right after our divorce. But then um, now they're better and he's an amazing dad and he's amazing support for me and he's very supportive and he's hilarious. And and so like, I believe he's one of my soulmates. Um, Kristen, you just ordered your book. When you get home, yes, I will sign it the next time you're up here for sure. Um, so, okay, um, and so soulmates, and so then Twin Flames. I talked about Twin Flames in the video um, that I posted, it's on YouTube, it was, it's in my social media feed. Um, twin Flames are our spiritual mirror. Twin Flames reveal to us our deepest hurt, our core wounds. And these core wounds, um, you know, they revealed through the patterns, through the dynamic of the relationship, um, and, you know, what I, I mentioned a little bit, what came out in my own learning through, you know, my dynamic with my twin flame, where it was like my, like he had his own shit that was coming up for him. And as I said, we triggered each other in different ways. And so my, um, my core wounding that came out was my sense of inferiority, was my fear of abandonment, was my fear of not being chosen, um, was fear of rejection was shame, like hella shame, a ton of shame I had around, um, I guess being, you know, because a big part of shame is just, is who you are, is just being. And, um, and, and that was rooted in my childhood. That was rooted in the sexual abuse I experienced. Um, I was raped in my adolescence. So it's like a lot of the, the shame is really sneaky. So it, it brought all of these things up for me to really be able to look at and um, pick apart and do my own healing work around it. And, and in doing my own healing work, um, I've, you know, emerged on the other side of that, thankfully, and I'm so much stronger because of it. And I understand myself and I view myself through the lens of compassion, through the lens of love. I have a ton of practices in place throughout the day that are, that are very supportive for me as I've healed those core wounds. So this, you know, this relationship with the twin flame brings you to either a brand new spiritual awakening or a new level of your spiritual awakening. So um, those of you who are on with me right now, let me know if that resonates with you and if that makes sense. You know, so far, even the, the soul contracts that we have with other people moving from 3D to 5D and our awareness of what we're doing here. And then also how you feel about soulmates and twin flames and, um, you know, and what that feels like for you. When we're in the twin flame relationship, we think we're supposed to be with them forever. They feel like home. And the reason why they feel like home is because we repeat patterns from our childhood in the dynamic of the relationship that were unhealthy so that we can clear them. Like, for me, being with this partner, this significant other, my twin flame, who I write about in my book, <clears throat> keep showing up, it's on Amazon, who I write about in my book, um, was someone who was emotionally unavailable for me. And I would give, 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 and, you know, the people pleaser and, you know, um, and all of that for this person. And, um, and it wasn't reciprocated. And, and for me, what it showed me and why I was okay with that dynamic was because I was taught that love and abuse could coexist from my childhood. I was taught that um, it was okay to be with someone who was emotionally unavailable because I had grew up in that dynamic. You know, my parents had their own stuff. And they were very loving, but they were caught up in their own stuff. And so they weren't able to fully show up for me emotionally. Hell no. And so, yes, I was, I re will repeat these cycles until we see, until we see it. Um, CG uh, makes total sense to me. Soulmates and twin flames. Yes. Miriam, can I go through soul contracts? Um, the twin flame is your toxic sister. Okay. And that's okay too. It's the, see the lessons see the lessons um briefly miriam yeah i will i'll touch on it um oh you two must know each other you guys um lily i noticed for me i've been going through huge fluctuations with energy divine energy divine love divine power one moment extreme darkness the next the 3d terms bipolar um but in energetics just huge vibratory shifts throughout the day yes 
And that's what's wild about mental illness diagnosis. And like I said in, you know, my other video um, is I am not a psychiatrist. You know, I have a background in psychology. I am a registered nurse. I love birth. I love rebirth. I love spirituality. I love like all of this. And yes, yeah, so you're looking for the lesson. So here's the deal. A lot of mental illnesses and a lot of um, diagnoses that are in the DSM-4 right now or the DSM, they are basically a dysregulated nervous system, they're, they're, which comes out of having had trauma. And our nervous system is, is, is hyper activated. And, um, and so learning about that is extremely empowering because then we get to take back our power. We get to get the lessons so good. You just keep observing Lily, become the witness, do your best to just become the witness and observe that. Breaking the cycle has been my mantra. Yeah, I don't have my mug in here, but I have a mug that says cycle breaker that I had created. It's for sale on my website. I'm still working with getting my swag activated on my site, my swag store, but um, cycle breaker is one of them. I have a sweatshirt that says cycle breaker, tank top. And yes, breaking the cycle has been your mantra because that's what we get to do. We get to learn about all this stuff and then we get to break the cycle. So, um, so yes, there's so much more around twin flames and um, what the lessons are out of that. And then we have, because, okay, so I do believe that twin flames can be together for a lifetime. I do, I do believe that. And a big part of that is that the, is that both parties get to do their own work. You know, it, it, honestly, it, I do not believe it can just be one person doing their work. In the way we respond, you know, shifts the other person's response and then they start acting different. Like, great, beautiful in theory. But our 3D versions of ourselves, it just doesn't happen like that. They have to do their own work too. So both parties get to do their own work and come to their own healing, their own realizations, uh, practicing unlearning and relearning new ways of being, and then practice co-regulating and being in dynamic together. <clears throat> our, our, our relationships are our greatest spiritual teachers because they show us this core wounding. They show us everything that we get to heal for our soul's ascension in this lifetime. Um, and if that's not the case, then you get to choose whether you want to, whether you want to tolerate that, you know, whether that's the life you want to be living or not. And for me, it wasn't for me. I was constantly abandoning my own needs um, and my own, um, desires for this person. And I was constantly betraying myself just to get their love. But like, what love was it that I was trying to get? You know, it was like, I really had to look at that. So, um, so lots of inner child work, lots of reparenting, which I'm going to be getting into rituals and reparenting this weekend on Saturday, um, because so much work, you know, I got to do so much work around that for my own healing and for breaking my own cycles. Like this isn't just, you know, there's one, there's one remedy for everybody. This is like, we have, we get to layer on all the, all the healing, all the different ways that we're able to heal and, um, and see what sticks for us. So, um, so yeah, then the boundaries in place and then honoring those boundaries and, and feeling the hurt and the resonance of all that and moving on, you know, seeing so there's something that I'm going to be, um, posting more about because it's something that keeps showing up for me. Uh, Lily and her child work is the best. Absolutely. Um, is about you're struggling in the same way, giving too much. Yeah. Um, something that I'm going to be posting about is uh, falling in love with someone's potential and, you know, seeing the potential in someone else. And then really it's just, you're creating an imaginary person. So what's the ideal versus the real of the situation? What is the, what, how is the person really showing up for you? And that's what we, that's what you got. We got to look at whether you, when you're deciding to cut ties with your twin flame or with whoever this other person is. So, um, so the third partner that we end up aligning with is our life partner. Um, and this one is more rooted in love. This one is shared interests, um, shared lifestyle, and it's more rooted in love. Whereas the twin flame relationship is more rooted in fear and more rooted in that wounding. It's more rooted in the traumas. Um, I, 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 made two videos, Trauma Bonds 1, Trauma Bonds 2, uh, a couple weeks ago. They're on my YouTube channel and they're in my social media feed. Um, but they're more, twin flame relationships are more rooted in trauma bonds and um, the insecure attachment cells and codependency and toxic 
toxicity and not not just the other person's but you know i saw my own toxic patterns come out in the relationships too so it was very humbling and there was a lot of learning that i found in that and now i get to do that with my one-on-one clients and in my group coaching um cheryl yeah it's also the hardest to break away from it yeah it is it really is this is what your soul is here to do when you're ready to get the lessons you break the cycle so i another thing about cycles i say is um the pattern it's like i think this is what it is the pattern ends when you decide to no longer participate and there's a graphic i've created about it and i'm sure i wrote you know a, a post about it too um but the cycle ends when you decide to know the karmic cycle ends when you decide to no longer participate so that's huge but we get to decide you know we get to decide okay so then there's the life partner lifestyles match deep healing takes place so the soul contracts um Miriam, just to address this for you, the soul contracts are in place where our soul has agreed with another soul to be able to um, have abuse, betrayal, um, abandonment, like all of the shit to be able to teach us the lessons so we can pull the mess out of so we can pull the message out of the mess so that we can really learn. Um, we view our triggers as our teachers, you know, like all of those things um mm. so our soul contracts are um i gave some examples earlier um in my feed uh or like a couple days ago i posted um and then also when i first started talking about this miriam to learn forgiveness another soul has agreed to it um to give you the experience of betrayal or mistreatment to learn to be independent and strong another soul agreed to abandon you at your worst to learn how to be taken care of, your soul may experience great illness. To learn about self-esteem, assertiveness, boundaries, and empowerment, there may be another soul who has agreed to abandon you. So, um, so yes, like though, and then also I had other examples too of soul contracts. I don't think I printed the graphic though. Um, so those, so those soul contracts before we enter this body are, um, are our soul makes these agreements with other people. Lily Cat, with all the lovely souls here and God is my witness, I'm ready to get the lesson and break the cycle. Yes, seriously. Okay, so you ready to do the work? The Soul Ascension Academy opens October 4th. Okay, are you on the wait list for it? So you can see what that exclusive offer is. Um, also one, one other thing, um, and then I'm gonna review everything and make sure that I touched on it. But one other thing is just this concept of moving from 3D to 5D and um, from the third dimension of awareness to the fifth dimension of awareness and um, understanding, like being able to zoom out, zoom out. you're welcome, Miriam, um, for explaining in detail, you're welcome. Um, so zooming out a couple lenses, a couple frames is seeing that our soul, okay, let me, let me like rewind and rephrase this. When we want somebody to change, well, we want somebody to change so bad and we want them to show up a different way for us or we want them to um, get the lessons or we're trying to do all this education around different things. It's like those people, we cannot force them to change. We cannot force someone to get the lesson. We cannot force them to grow. It's not on us. This is part of their path. We're all at different levels of soul maturation. Okay, we're all, this is, that's like, huge we're all at different levels of soul maturation our soul matures at different times and so you know me being holding this space and offering this as education here there must be something along the way for me that i've had repeated and now i'm like fuck this i'm breaking these patterns i don't want to pass this on to my boys i want to educate them give them tools help them feel empowered in their own lives moving forward you know i'm breaking the cycles from my parents having been unavailable and everything that i experienced to not passing that on to future generations you know like there was something for me where i got this and then now i can share this with you guys and and we're all here um, with my twin flame, I couldn't force him to be a certain way. I couldn't force him to get the lessons. I have all this knowledge. This is all stuff that I was sharing with him too. He wasn't in a place to receive it. He wasn't. He wasn't in a place to receive it. And I, and I had to come to terms with that. I got to come to terms with that and understand that um, this just isn't part of, I, we can't force anybody. So um, I saw a graphic the other day that was like, um, you know, this concept of 
raising awareness around these different things where it's like, yes, um, so being at different levels with our soul's maturation and it's like teaching a baby how to read. And so that was like, yeah, it's like teaching a baby how to read. They're not ready for it and that's okay. We're just in different places and that's okay. Um, let's see, Lily, thank you. You're so smart. Thank you for doing this. You're welcome. Thank you for being here and, and receiving it. Sana, you're so beautiful and radiant. Stay blessed. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. I, I'm glad that you're here to receive it. Um, so, okay, let me make, look over my notes and make sure that I touched on everything. The Soul Ascension Academy, the wait list is open right now. Um, and I am going to be uh, offering an offer, an exclusive um, tidbit for those who are on the wait list once registration does open, actually a little bit before registration opens. But um, there is limited space available in the program. So um, if you're curious about any of this stuff and you're wanting to learn more and do your own healing work, consider that, okay? Um, and um, ri rituals and reparenting is this weekend. It's Saturday. And um, I'm going to be posting more about it and sharing more about it. But it's basically, you know, being able to incorporate more spiritual practices, more rituals into our lives to help support us in our healing journey and reparent and do our inner child healing around so many of these topics because we're self healers. We're in this group. We're intuitive self healers. And so we get to be the ones that do the work. Okay. Um, and let me know if you guys have any questions for those of you who are on here now as I just look over my notes. I'll make sure that I covered everything that I was hoping to. Okay. So for those of you who are tuned in right now, take some deep breaths in and out. in through the nose, out through the mouth. And allow yourself to think about your highest, the highest, your highest self, your biggest expression. And how she feels. Just tune into that for a minute. No big, long meditation, centering, grounding. Just tuned into your highest self and how she shows up and how she feels. Kristen, I'll post the list. I will post the link for the uh, wait list. So you're thinking about your highest self, how she shows up, how she feels, most importantly, how she feels. And know that you're moving towards that. Here, I'll put it in the comments. This is the link that I'm putting um, in the comments is to the Soul Ascension Academy. So you can read more about the Soul Ascension Academy and then also um, see that there's a wait list. You'll see the pricing there. I'm not trying to hide anything about the pricing. Um, I do believe that, you know, everything is an energetic exchange and, um, there, I always think of what is the cost? What is the, the cost is the value we put on something. So how much do we value shifting and transforming our lives? How much do we value becoming a new version of ourselves? How much do we value aligning our own frequency, our own energy to attract the love of our lives and create this relationship that is fulfilling and that does feel like uh, it has so much meaning and that we do have deep connections? You know, what is the, what is the cost we put on that? It's like there is no there is no monetary number to put on that. So um, the, honestly, the the program is priced very reasonably. It's six weeks of us getting to be together, a new module every week, and um, a private Facebook group, and a live call with me every week. Lots of interaction, lots of camaraderie, lots of sisterhood. Um, I just wrapped up Wounded to Worthy. Um, a couple weeks ago, and we had such an amazing time with the women, um, myself, who were in that program, and they they experienced huge shifts. And um, I'm going to be sharing about one of them um, from one of the women who has been in contact with me and what she's what she's felt the shift in herself, and it's really amazing. So, um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of power being able to do this deeply healing work within the container of you know, a sisterhood or 
um, in a group, a group program and experience. So I hope you guys have enjoyed learning about moving from 3D to 5D, the third dimension of awareness to the fifth dimension. And, um, and everything that goes with that, you see there's just like so much to it. So um, take it all in. Let me know what your, your thoughts are, your comments. Please feel free to share this group with anyone. Um, Miriam, Wounded to Worthy was a life-changing experience for you. Yeah, it, it, it really is such amazing content. And, um, and yeah, what is the price you can put on that, really? I mean, I've invested thousands of dollars in my own, tens of thousands of dollars in my own growth and in my own uh, personal development. And, and it's ongoing. It's really ongoing. I will always be working with a coach. I'm certain of that. I will always have someone that I'm able to um, be coached and guided by because it's just, I keep up leveling and that's what we do. Then that's what we're here. That's okay. That's what we're here to do. So, um, so yeah, I hope you found this useful. Feel free to share it with friends or anyone who you think that would really resonate with this information. Um, we're on day three of the 21 day um, self-love Affir positive affirmation challenge, self-love affirmation challenge through my text line. Um, I've posted a lot about that. If you are interested in joining that text line, let me know. It's just a free text. You know, it's free to be on it. You can opt out at any time. And um, this 21 day self-love affirmation challenge is a text every day. And um, today was, um, let me see what today was because I get the text too, of course. I have myself programmed in as Kara's love and empowerment line. Today, the text was all is well in this moment. <sighs> all right, Lily, I'll put the, I'll put some information here for it. So what we do when we get the message is we just say, okay, all is well in this moment. <sighs> Breathe it in, exhale out any doubts. And, um, and then, yeah, we keep repeating it throughout the day. Tyler got married. Oh, my God. I love him. Congratulations. Okay. Um, Sine, I'm not sure if you can, if it's international, the text line. Um, I'm not sure if, if you'd be able to uh, get it. I guess it would depend on your texting. Um, but, yeah, I'll put it in. I'll put it in the, the comments. Okay, you guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking in this information. And I had a lot to share. I did not anticipate it taking over an hour. So um, I, I really hope that, you know, you're able to receive it and um, and know that I'm here for support and know that I'm super pumped about the Soul Ascension, the Soul Ascension Academy that um, opens or that would get started October 4th. And, um, and yeah, get on the wait list. Up at the link is here and again i'll put it in the description and um be in touch with any questions okay you're welcome miriam you're welcome peace out guys love you